is John Stanton and the Mariners owners failing us as a fan base, Levi? We haven't spent anything this offseason. We've unloaded close to $40 million in cap. What is happening? Is this a good move? And why is John Stanton and the Mariners failing us? Uh, yeah, no, they're they're failing us right now. Um, it's it's a problem of they clearly care more about profit than about winning, and at this rate, it's not looking good. I mean, the the goalposts continuously are being moved back and back. Because first it was we're gonna tear down, we're gonna rebuild, and then once we have a winning team, we're gonna spend. Then we're gonna spend, and then you know we had a winning team in twenty twenty one. And then they said, well, you know, we're actually we're going to wait till 2022 to spend because we think 2022 has a better free agent class than 2021. That was what they said. That was what Depoto said in the 2021 offseason. So then 2021, we make a couple trades. We make the playoffs. 2022 offseason rolls around. And here comes the best shortstop free agent market in the history of baseball. And they said, well, actually – we're not going to sign anyone this year either, except for AJ Pollock um, and Trevor Gott, who both aren't going to be on the team by June because, you know, we're actually going to save our money for Otani in 2023. Okay. Fair, fair. You want to go all in for the best player uh, in the game. Fair. Now 2023 rolls around and then they say, well, actually we're probably aren't going to get Otani that's probably unrealistic. You know, he's, he's too expensive. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we can true. get, you know, some yeah. other players. Yeah. Maybe then they say, well, but, but we are still going to um, increase this, the payroll. Right. Okay. Two weeks later, a new article comes out in the Seattle times. Well, actually the Mariners are probably going to have around the same payroll, right? 140 probably is going to be their cap. Maybe, maybe 130, maybe 135, somewhere in that range. Okay. Then they trade Jared Kelnick away. Now you're down to a $92 million payroll with a projected payroll of 115. Okay, well, you can still you can still spend quite a bit of money here, right? But then two days ago, another new article comes out. Now the projection is that we only have, according to this new article uh, by Luke Gold in the Seattle Times, we only have $20 million to spend. That puts us under last year's payroll. So we went from saving for Otani to not going to get Otani, but we might be all in for Yamamoto to we probably won't get the big guys, but we are going to up the payroll to actually we're going to lower the payroll. Ridiculous. And my question is, how do you expect to improve your team without adding significant talent in free agency? And there's just, there's not a whole lot of significant talent that you're going to get for 20 million combined. Unless you want to put all 20 million into like, if you want to put all 20 million into Lord Escurial Jr., like you could try that, but I don't think one guy changes the team. You need, I maintain, I think this team is four bats away. I think we need one great hitter. I think we need one good hitter. And then I think we need two more kind of depth, platoon-ish, two more guys who raise the floor. Because I see, what I see when I look at our lineup, I see four guys who would be starters for the majority of teams in baseball, and I see nine guys who would be on the bench for the majority of teams in baseball. And I, th- what I would like to see is maybe seven or eight guys opposite. who you are opposite. majority I, starters. The opposite like, would be- I love Cade Marlowe as a person, and I love, like, I yeah. love rooting for Sam Haggerty and Dylan Moore and Josh Rojas, but you don't need nine bench players I mean, on one team. Listen, you need four. Yeah, there's only four, there's four spots on the bench for a reason. There is no there is no explanation aside from John Stanton being a money-hungry billionaire. Go figure. The billionaire wants more yeah. money. Because the Mariners just came off of, you know, they just hosted the All-Star game. They just had one of them, you know, they had one, the, one of the highest attendance in um, their franchise history. They were in top 10 in revenue, I believe. All of these things point to an increase in payroll. The Mariners just missed the playoffs just barely, but we have a good core. Everyone says we need to spend more. You know, Jerry DePoto says, says we need to spend more. 
and now it looks like we're spending less. And less. it reminds you know, imagine you, your sister, your dad, your your brother, you know, your other brother, your dog, your cat, your grandpa's all living in a you know, a, you know, a, a three bedroom apartment, and then your parents get a raise, and and then you downgrade and in, in, into a in a one bedroom flat. I mean, it's ridiculous. I don't know what is happening right now. They should yeah. be upgrading to the, you know, to the suburban house that can fit everyone. And, and compared, we're, we're going downhill to the slums in this one bedroom apartment. And, and there's no need to. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. John Stanton has the money and he's not willing to spend it. And he can hide behind the cameras and he can leak out information and say he's all about winning and all he wants. But he's not. He's about making a profit. And. It is ridiculous. If you want to be the owner of a baseball team, it's about winning. You know, if you want to make money, go invest in the stock market. If you're trying to win baseball games, then you can be an owner. And John Stanton is trying to make a profit. You can't lose money here. I don't think he understands that. You could spend $200 million yeah. offseason and he would still make a profit because you know why? Because tomorrow, John Stanton could sell the team for multiple billion dollars, and there will be many different there will be many different billionaires that would jump on the opportunity to buy it from him. He can't lose money. He is literally pinching pennies. It's like if we lost, you know, a couple hundred dollars out of our bank account. Would it hurt? Not really, especially yeah. if you're investing into a baseball team. This is ridiculous, and. It's not too late, John Stanton. You know, for the 0.0001% chance you're watching this, go get Yamamoto. You know, go get Bellinger. Yeah. It's not too late. This offseason is not over. But you know when it will be? Very, very soon. In a couple exactly. of weeks, most free agents will be off the board. And we're going to be settling for C, you know, B minus at best free agents. And we're not going to make the playoffs with that type of mentality. John Stanton needs to get this together. You know, there's only so much Jerry DePoto can do with the amount of money he's given. And you can tell by his comments that he's frustrated. And I, I hate to rip on Jerry DePoto as much as I did. I feel bad for the guy, honestly, because I ripped into him at the start of this offseason. And it's coming, it's becoming more and more clear that his hands are cuffed. That, yeah, that John Stanton is the person that, that's really. Limited. I still I still think Jerry's a little bit too trigger happy with trades as far as but but I agree make I think, something work. I mean when there, a part of it is also the leverage of the situation. Like Jerry doesn't have much leverage when teams can literally look at this and say, Hey, hey Jerry, you want to get, you know, Randy or Rosarena? Well tell me this, riddle me this, Jerry. How many young batters, how many young uh outfield hitters have you developed through the draft? Well, the answer is none. Okay, well, how many have you signed in free agency? Well, the answer is none. So it's like, okay, well, we struck, gold, we struck gold with Julio, but besides him, we have not proven ourselves able to develop young outfielders or young infielders in the past 10 years. We know and pitchers. then we also – that's just pitchers. And, we, and so if you can't draft them and you can't develop them well, then your options are sign them or your options are – give away prospects and pitchers for them. And the other teams can use that as leverage. So it's like, why does it feel like all of our trades are not like super even? Maybe it's because we have no negotiation leverage because when other teams can just go out and sign these players or be like the Braves and literally just eat the money on bad contracts to get a free Jared Kelnick, then it's like, yeah, I see why right. we're falling behind here. Like, I understand where you're coming from, but also Jared Kalanick is a starting left fielder in this league, like straight up. like Exactly. And we gave him away for free, essentially. He's not a star. He's not, you know, he's an average left fielder, but that's what we need going into this next yeah. year. Jared Kalanick. No, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. Fire. Okay. But, but my thing is, Jared Apoda would not trade Jared Kalanick because he wanted to get rid of Jared Kalanick. He traded Jared No, Kalanick I agree. Because John Stanton you know, tied his hands behind his back and said, you're working with X amount of money. And in order to get the free agents that Jerry DePoto supposedly wants to get, 
He needed to offload contracts like Marco Gonzalez and Evan White. And when you're the Yankees, when you're the Mets, when you're the Dodgers, you can eat those types of contracts. And, you know, Evan White and Marco Gonzalez, is it annoying you're paying them $20 million combined? Sure. But at the end of the day, those types of teams keep Jared Kalanick and pay the other two guys $20 million. Because who did we get in return? Not starters. No, no. we got guys a prospect that, in a really, yeah. Guys that I might mean, not even make the team. So it's to illustrate we're how trading away we talent for money. We're trading away talent for money in a it makes me so yeah. mad. We're trading away talent for money in a in a non-salary cap league. It makes zero sense. It makes zero I mean, sense. You look at what the Braves did. Look at what the Braves did with Marco and Evan White. They paid for they ended up flipping Marco to the Pirates. So the Pirates pay for half of his contract. And the Braves pay for, and the Braves didn't pay for any of it because we gave them the, the other half in you cash. Gave them like five million bucks for it. Exactly. So the Braves end up paying nothing for Marco. They gave him. They, the Pirates are willing to pay seven million, and the other five million came from us. So then they really got Jared Kelnick for for uh, Evan White, except they traded Evan White to get Max Stassi and David Fletcher. Uh. So the Braves essentially got Stassi, Fletcher, and Kelnick all for free. That's the crazy part. It blow. It literally and this is, blows this my is mind. What the and Mariners I could have done. I, the Mariners should have. We could have traded Evan White straight up to the Angels to get Fletcher and Stassi. Now that would have added. How much would that have added to the payroll? It would have added five million total over two seasons. And, you and we would have filled two holes. And you just filled two holes exactly. You fill. You fill for back five Fletcher million bucks and for five million. And then you can still trade Marco to the Pirates, and then. You still only have to pay half of that. So in total, for eleven million extra dollars, you would have gotten to keep Kellenic plus add an upgrade at second base and backup catcher for eleven million. That's all it would have took. But that's how cheap we are. We are eleven million. We are the type of team that is saying eleven million for three players. It's not worth it apparently. For and I'm gonna players. give Jerry. I'm gonna give Jerry Depoto the benefit of the doubt and realize that he could have made that trade. But we literally have zero financial, you know, capabilities. Yeah. I'm not blaming this on Depoto. I'm that's saying I, I honestly think, I honestly think that so Depoto wouldn't come. They would have, they would have so rejected that. It makes that's how worried so they are about the catch. It makes Why? me. So, <laughs> we're still talking over each other. It makes me so. <laughs> we're both clearly, <laughs> and it, you know, we're both clearly yeah. upset and frustrated. And part of my thing is, I think most Mariners fans are Seahawks fans. Mariners fans are going crazy. You know, I think a lot of Mariners, you know, yes, obviously there's the extreme Mariners fans that are going absolutely nuts. But I would say the average person outside the Seattle area who likes the Mariners but loves the Seahawks more think, yeah, okay, yeah we're getting rid of salary. You know, we're going to go make a move. In the NFL, that makes a lot more sense. But in the MLB, it doesn't make as much it sense. It doesn't, yeah. But there's no salary cap. And sure, there's a luxury tax, but we're not even close to that. I, imagine, no. imagine if the Seahawks got rid of – What's a comparable guy like Jackson Smith and Jigba and, you know, like an over in and, and like Jamal Adams. We're overpaying Jamal Adams. Imagine we got rid of those two guys for literally a like a practice squad guy from the Cowboys. We would be I yeah. we would be absolutely losing our shit. We, there was there is zero chance. <laughs> you are like, yeah, well, we're getting rid of cap. Well, no, there'd be some guys who would some people <laughs> would legitimately say it was a good move. No, but not as many as the Mariners. Like, Levi, there is a like a strong no, percentage know. of Mariners fans that are like, well, a big move is coming. Like, no, it isn't. Like, open your eyes. We're going to be signing like two or three okay free agents this year, and we're going to trade away a handful of prospects for like a mediocre bat to play left field. And that's going to be yeah. our offseason. Yeah, they, they went on 7-10. They brought in good. It's ridiculous. Today in 7-10, they brought in Ken Rosenthal. And he basically said, look, I know you guys aren't going to like this, but what you're probably going to be looking at is some uh, some moves that are going to be similar to Colton Wong and A.J. Pollock and Tommy Lastella. That's essentially what we're looking at. We're looking at a repeat of last offseason, which was we're going to sit out and then we're going to sign some guys. We like- have a worse team now. We've exactly. we've we have, we have, we have time right. last year we had a way better team than we do now. I would we argue our hands, that the Angels will finish better than us in the West. The well, Angels. no, if they if they lose Otani, they they're gonna finish last. But the A's might finish better than us. No, I the Angels are nothing I'm without Shohei. 
our fifth or our like our who is hitting number five for us? I would hit Rojas fifth right now, or Canzone. Like say that again for the people in the back. Rojas and Canzone in the five hole. We're not going jack squat. <laughs> you think we want to yeah. win the World Series? We, I'd be lucky to go over 500 with Rojas in the five hole. That's without injuries. That is without yeah. injuries. Without injuries. There is an Ooh. enormous possibility that Ty France plays like absolute shit. And then we don't have a left fielder. We don't have a first base. We have a center fielder, no right fielder in my eyes, a mediocre third base. JP Crawford could have a down year. That is entirely a possibility. I don't yeah, think JP is a, he's is a candidate for regression. Yeah. I mean, J.P. Crawford and Cal Raleigh had, like, career years. And if they replicate both those years, that'd be great. I wouldn't count on it. And right now, even with You them, have to count on Even with them. Yes, exactly. Even with them performing as good as they did last year, we're a 500 team. And that's at their Yeah, best. it's rough. Like, I'm, this is the type of moves that I, I'm expecting us to sign somebody like Travis Jankowski and somebody like Aaron Hicks and somebody like you know, maybe Eduardo Escobar, all fo- all solid players, but none of them are guys who you're comfortable batting fifth in the lineup. Ooh. But that's the type of moves we're probably going to be making. You know, we're not going to be making, uh, we're not going to be getting Cody Bellinger. We're not going to be even, we're not even probably going to be in the market for Tommy Pham. At this point, if we signed Tommy Pham, I would rejoice. And I did not think that was the point I was going to be at in the off season is like, Please, can we just get Tommy Pham? I I'm just so and like Justin Turner. I would at this if you told me it two months ago that the Mariners might sign Justin Turner, I would have said, "Oh, I think there's some better options out there. Like he's 39, he can really only be a DH first base. You know, he's just not that good." If you told me right now tomorrow that we're signing Justin Turner, I'd be over the moon because now I'm saying, "Well, we're gonna have to play him at third base." This he'd be better than Urias. It's a Friday night, and I'm eating goldfish, talking to one of my best friends, and getting absolutely worked up about the Seattle Mariners. Yeah. I wish I didn't have to do that. I wish. Also, can I just say this? I could be sitting back as a Mariner fan and, you know, getting excited for a, an amazing year and, like, having actual aspirations to make the World Series. Because at the end of the day, I live in Syracuse right now. And when I talk to my friends, a lot of them Yankee fans, Met fans, Boston Red Sox fans, etc. When I tell them that we've never made the World Series, they literally don't believe me. Like the like the fact that we have never made the World Series is absolutely ridiculous. What the hell is the odds? Like I don't like I I hate this team like right now so much. I I go to 15 games, 20 games a year for what? For what? <laughs> For the next year, for us to be mediocre, yeah. and then the year after that, for us to be worse. And for the tickets to go up in price every season. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, so much for the we $10, wasted, $10 we value. We wasted Ichiro. Baby. Screw you. We wasted Ichiro's prime. We wasted Felix's prime. And now we're, we're basically about saying we're, about we're basically movie. saying we are comfortable wasting Julio's prime because you know what? The dirty little secret that the front office knows is that as long as you have one superstar, They'll you make can money. make a ton of profit. They'll make money. <laughs> the Angels have been doing this with Mike Trout for years. And you know, and who was the Angels GM when they had Mike Trout and they weren't making the playoffs? It was Jerry DeBoto. <laughs> and now he resigned from that job because their owner forced him to make trades and free agent signings that he didn't think was smart. Their owner boss Jerry to put her around too much and then Jerry. the Angels missed the playoffs too pretty and shitty. then he quit and now the owner maybe not meddling in the same way that the Angels ownership did but this time the owner says do whatever the hell you want but I'm only going to give you 20 million dollars after and again 40. what happens if negative. Jerry leaves Imagine if Jerry quits oh my God. then we're toast because who's going who's gonna to run the team if Jerry oh, who's going to sign up Who's going to be like, oh, yeah, I definitely want to come be the GM for this team. Imagine John you, you, imagine I'll do it. John Stanton in October being like, yeah, Jerry DePoto, by the way, you're working with negative $20 million right now. Yeah. 
what? And it's all like, because of the stupidest thing, like root sports. That's the reasoning that they're that they're telling us. Screw you. It's a drop in the bucket. Screw you. You're making millions of dollars. Millions. I, I mean, you know, my suggestion is I say Seattle, there's a bunch of other teams that are having the same problem with root sports. How about here's a great idea. How about you make a root sports app and you say you want to watch your favorite team? Pay three bucks a month to watch your favorite team. And now you're not going to lose out on all the ad revenue. I think people would pay three bucks a month because the alternative now is to pay like 18 are paying, bucks a month. Now people like me are paying three bucks a month compared to streaming it online illegally. So exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because what I'm going to be doing right now, my plan is I'm going to stream every single game on this a pirated a, website. Yeah, I agree. But this is irrelevant at the end of the day. You know why? Because John Stanton is making money fist over hand yeah. with or without this root sports. It's like a 10 15 million dollar swing whatever we've grown we've grown almost a billion dollars as far as the value of our franchise since he bought the team nine or eight years ago so in eight years we have gained we're averaging like a hundred million a year in the rev in like the value of the mariners going up yeah a hundred million a year that's our team's value so you're telling me that he's that worried about upping the payroll, he could sell the team and he could net gain eight hundred million. I hate so he much. Could net I hate gain eight hundred million. He's not losing money. He he's so greedy. It's ridiculous. If he really cares, and about he's money, not even the highest owner on the team. The highest guy is some guy named Chris Larson. You know, for all the sh- you know for all the crap I give Mariner fans for saying we're actually going to get Otani, but more I'm thinking about it. Like, if he's really that serious about making money. Even though he Otani, should get Otani. Yeah, even though Otani is going to cost you $45 million a year, how much revenue are you going to get from Otani? A lot. You'd sell out every game. If you have Otani, the Mariners would sell out every single game. I don't know about every, but I'm you're sure getting like would. A, a lot more. Like And jersey sales through the roof. Because you also, there's an entire country. The best player in baseball. There's the more an entire I think about country it, of the more I think about it, I think the, the buy that jersey. I know Tani. I think the solution is sign Otani because he's the only player. Pl- sign sign Otani and Yamamoto. The whole the whole country of Japan's about to move to Seattle. I mean, this is this, <laughs> this is great. And that's what I'm saying. So let's let me look up what's the population of, of Japan. Just just for the fun of it, population 125 million. If you sign Otani, there's now 125 million people who want to buy that jersey. Oh. There's probably forty, but still, 40. like, still, yeah. that's a lot of people. Like, that's bigger than almost your entire fan base. You, you just doubled your fan base right there. Literally, which literally. is exactly what we did when we had Ichiro, and then we alienated the fan base by and wasting a lot all of, those of fans Ichiro's now, prime. Yeah, guess what? Guess what? Those fans are now rooting for the Angels. The Angels. So let's bring him back. I, the more I'm thinking if he about goes it, to the bring Blue Joey. Jays, I would be so mad. I'm sorry. Great if show if Shohei part. goes to the Blue Jays, I'm gonna be pissed. You know who? You know who should we have? We should have a guy that goes in to John Stanton's office and just like sits there with him for like 20 minutes a day and just like says, just like just like stares at him and goes like, <laughs> "You're gonna make money either way," and just like like kind of like hallucinates him into like giving Jerry Depoto an extra like 20 million dollars, like. Oh. Okay, give Jerry twenty million more. Like, yeah, like the core is now. The time to win is now. Everyone it. in the media is saying, like, the Mariners are getting flamed by ESPN reporters for the past two weeks. It's hilarious to watch, but it's also really sad to watch. Kind of depressing, actually, when every everyone and their mom is talking about the Mariners right now, and the reason is because they're saying we are wasting. The core opportunity to win the, in the are, playoffs. We are. This is this is the best chance we've had since two thousand and one to win the World Series, and instead of going all in, we are going like forty percent in. It's like that's not what you do. Like this is our best chance. Fine. We we he, we gave John. And you know what? Negative twenty million bucks. I guess. You know what? Maybe this is controversial. I don't think it is. I. I would argue that if we go all in for three seasons and we win the World Series in one of those three seasons, and it. then and then we have to take a few down seasons and then have a couple losing years, it's a 
it's worth it a million times because we are the only team that hasn't been to the World Series yet. I would take 19 years of of downtime. You know why? Because I've already done it. We've already done it. It's, it's already crazy. happened. Crazy. This 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 stupid team. I don't know why I like root for these this team. That's another thing. When you're good, despite what he thinks, more people will watch you. So if you want yeah. money, like just the logic doesn't make sense to me. And you know what's so gonna convince because I've been in New York for literally four months, and people have literally acted like the world's about to end because the Yankees missed the playoffs one year. And now they have yeah. one. You know why? Because the Yankees win and they win fast and they don't wait for, you know, the stars to align perfectly to go win. If they see an opportunity, they jump at it. And the Mariners are in a better position than the Yankees to win right now. And we're doing nothing. And the Yankees have show uh, have Juan Soto. And who do we have? We lost Eugenio Suarez, Jared Kalanick, Marco Gonzalez, didn't re-sign Teo, lost Paul Seawald in the, like, you know, the trade deadline. This team has gone worse, and it's not close. Yeah, it's it's a rough situation, and the bottom line is something has to change or else, you're right, people are going to stop watching. Nobody's going to pay 18 extra dollars a month to get the upgraded tier to watch Root Sports if they don't add players. You know what? You know what might convince a bunch of people – who might be able to afford that. But right now they're thinking to themselves, why should I pay extra if the team's not going to pay extra to get me to, you know, what might convince them to pay extra Shohei mm-hmm. Otani or oh, maybe not even Shohei Otani, Cody Bellinger. That might be enough to convince them. It's ridiculous. John Stanton, please. You have an opportunity to fix this. It's not too late. Please go out and fix this. Cause it's bad right now. And, and the fan base is starting to turn on you. It's time. You know, you've yeah. hidden behind the shadows. You've hidden in the shadows, you know, behind the cameras for long enough. You know, really, you know, go on 710. Do an interview. Say you want to spend money and then go do it. And if you do that, I won't say anything bad about you. And if Jerry DePoto messes it up, so be it. But at least give Jerry DePoto the opportunity to mess it up. Right now, he's never had that opportunity. Right now, you're not even giving him the chance to mess it up. You're like you're literally putting him in a position to fail, and by putting him in a position to fail, you're putting us as fans in a position to fail. Because next year, I'm still gonna watch, and I'm still gonna go to 15 games, and I'm going to be disappointed. And I don't think that's fair to me, and I don't think that's fair to the rest of the Mariners fan base, because you're making money either way. And that's all I have to say about this one. Levi, got anything to close it out? Go Mariners. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, everyone. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, we do appreciate it a lot. We're releasing a Seahawks pregame about the 49ers slash of what kind of needs to happen for the Mariners or the Seahawks to make the playoffs type thing. If you're interested in that play, I, that's something we don't mention much, Levi. We're here. We're a non ad, you know, YouTube channel right now. You know, we, you know, no ads on our video. So, yeah. if you, you know, if you want to just really play something, kind of relax and you know go on a drive like this is 40 minutes of content that you can listen to without any ads i think that's kind of rare so you know take advantage of that and keep watching our stuff subscribe we're trying to get to 600 by the end of the year and i think that's about it yeah you know what if you're a fan of, of sports in seattle uh, you'll i think you'll find that you know sometimes drew and i can be a little bit of a, a intense but i think for the most part uh we try to we try to be well researched and we try to be a voice for the fans. You know, we're not, we're not going to, we don't, we don't get told by the producers at ESPN what we are meant to talk about. You know, we're, we're just having open dialogues, open conversations. They don't care about really the Mariners. Kind of, they don't care about the Mariners. We do. So if you want yeah, to exactly. people that care about the Mariners, please go watch us. And, and it really does help us. And to be honest, it motivates us to make more content because we like making content. It is hard to like the consistent grind. Like, you know, we've been doing this for years now, which is kind of crazy to say. We are literally years. We're approaching a thousand, (laughs) we're approaching a thousand YouTube videos, which is kind of crazy to even think about. Yeah. Uh, But, you know, it it does really help us a lot and and it makes us want to make more content. And at the end of the day, we're making content for you guys. So it really would help us out a lot. And, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, we do appreciate it. If you made it to all the way to the end of a 40 minute YouTube video and we've just talked for two minutes about self-promotion <laughs> and we're still here, 
like i don't know how many of you are here there's probably like yeah you know you know maybe five i mean i know our boys here you know you if you know you know you know i know our guys here but if anyone else is here and you're not subscribed i actually don't know what you're doing like like so anyways that's all i got um yeah thanks everybody right, go mariners please spend please oh shoot <laughs> i recorded it my bad go mariners <laughs>